Mercedes genuinely look on the back foot here. The second test of Formula 1 got underway in Bahrain ahead of the 2022 season. All the cars were back out for the second round of testing. Before this test, Haas had confirmed the cancellation of Eurocali, their main sponsor, as well as the termination of Nikita Mazepin's contract. This is due to the ongoing war in Ukraine and Russia, and those both Eurocali and Nikita Mazepin were Russian-backed. I did a video previously on this and I've linked it in the description below if you've missed that. Has then confirmed that Pietro Fittipaldi will be in the car for testing but that it will be Kevin Magnussen back in Formula 1 for the 2022 season for them. He returned to the team on a multi-year deal ahead of the 2022 season. He was actually one of the drivers I looked at as a possible replacement on my video that I did previously. He knows the team very well having been there for a good four years from 2017 to 2020 but it looked like it was funding that was the issue and that's why he was dropped before the 2021 season. However, it's good to see him back and raring to go for them again. Before the first day began, it looks like what's become customary has happened again. This is when all the drivers line up on the grid with themselves and their cars. I do believe this is for the Netflix series so they take pictures for Netflix and the recordings as well. But it is a good chance for the drivers to speak among themselves as well as look around each competitor's car. A note to make that Daniel Ricciardo for McLaren was missing from this shoot and the day. This is because he was feeling unwell and couldn't make it to the track. But when the cars were all lined up, everyone's eyes were on the Mercedes. This is because Mercedes had unveiled their radical side pods and it looks like they engineered a car with no side pods, which the teams up and down the grid were all confused about. This just reminds me of when Red Bull came out on the first day in Barcelona with those radical side pods as well. So as mentioned, all eyes were on the Mercedes as up and down the paddock, they looked at those no side pod side pods. And as usual, and like clockwork, Christian Horner came out with a comment. But yeah, let me actually read to you what he said. So he said that the new Mercedes violates the spirit of the regulations and that for us, there are some parts that are not legal. Word then got around on social media that he had said this. Then Red Bull then came out with an official statement saying that Horner didn't say anything officially. But he did say those exact words to a journalist and hence why it was published, even though it wasn't official. As that's why it did the rounds on social media and all over the internet. It may not have been official as Red Bull's statement has said, but Horner did say it and it looks like he's already on his protest bike. And we haven't even reached the first race of the season. Now let's actually talk about what happened on day one. It was a good first day from Ferrari as they carried on from where they was in Barcelona. They were again near the top of the timesheets as they had been over the first test as well. Leclerc set the fastest time in the morning and he managed to get under his belt 62 laps. Science was in the car in the afternoon and he managed to get 52 laps and it was overall a good day and good running and mileage for the team overall. But unfortunately for Ferrari, it was Gasly in the Alfa Tauri that topped the timesheet at the end of the day. He put in a lot of laps and went fastest overall. He was in the car all day and managed to do 103 laps, which showed good reliability as well as pace in the car. Lewis in the Mercedes managed to do 62 laps in the morning as he just worked through his one plan with the team. George was in the car in the afternoon and he managed 60 laps. And as mentioned, it was a very different Mercedes to the one we saw in Barcelona testing. And this was of course due to the no side pod side pods. But obviously time will tell if this is actually an advantage or a disadvantage to the team. Alfa Romeo looked like they fixed their reliability issues from the Barcelona test. Both drivers got a lot of laps under their belt on the first day and only a small stop during the pit lane for Joel was the only issue throughout the day. Bottas managed to complete 64 laps with Joel, his teammate, doing 54 laps. As mentioned, Lando was in the car all day with Daniel Ricciardo unwell. Lando unfortunately only managed to do 49 laps for the whole day as he and the team had issues with overheating brakes and this meant that they couldn't do any long runs and had to limit themselves in terms of their running. So they didn't manage to do the mileage they wanted to do in the first day. Aston Martin had a tough day with both their drivers locking up a number of times as they tried to tame that car. Stroll even managed to lose some aero bits on the track and red flag the session. However, overall Vettel only managed to do 39 laps with Lance only doing a little bit better with 50 laps. Alpine had an okay day with both their drivers at the wheel. Both drivers did have a few issues, but they still managed to do 42 laps for Ocon and only 24 laps for Alonso. Perez probably had the strongest day of the drivers with him completed 138 laps all day, but he did end the session early as he spun his Red Bull in a low speed spin. He then unfortunately managed to beach the car and he had to red flag the session and end the session that day. The session wasn't restarted after this, but he focused on aero work during the whole day 
they got good reliability and good loads of laps. Haas had issue with getting their freight in on time for the session and as such they missed the morning session. They then raced to get together the car for the afternoon session for Fittipaldi. He managed to get 47 laps in the afternoon and Kevin Magnussen and Schumacher were shared the next two days. It was a good day for Alex Albon and the Williams managing 104 laps. But unfortunately he did have to stop early due to a rear hub issue. Paul poising was still a big issue up and down the grid, the same as it was in Barcelona over the three days of testing. It looks to be affecting the Mercedes and the AlphaTauri more than any other teams. There were numerous videos online over the AlphaTauri and Mercedes just jumping up and down the straight and they were doing this very violently and it looks like they haven't got a fix from it from the Barcelona test. I've done a full video on what pull posting is and what creates that. I've linked that in the description below. This is how the day one ended. George managed to do 67 laps in the Mercedes with Hamilton only managing 47. They were both trying to focus on race simulations, but honestly the pace just does not look there for the Mercedes. And they look like to be in serious danger of being back in the midfield. However, time will tell when they come to the first race in Bahrain. Max was in the car for Red Bull all day and he managed to do 86 laps. They had some new bits in the car to test and this is definitely not the car they'll be running in the race in Bahrain the week after. New bits will appear on day 3 as well as ahead of the race weekend, but it was a good day for him and overall for the team. Latifi had an issue early on with his brakes catching fire. He had to stop out on track and put that out. He only managed 12 laps before that fire and unfortunately the team couldn't fix that issue before the end of the day so 12 laps was all the Williams did. Vettel managed to clock out 43 laps in the morning session and like Latifi he had to stop out on track but for Aston Martin they managed to fix the issue and Stroll got into the car in the afternoon. Stroll managed to do 69 laps so overall good day running for the team. Sonoda was in the AlphaTauri all day for them and he did most laps out of all the drivers with a 119 laps. He did some high fuel, some low fuel and some race simulation runs as well. It was a strong running on day two as they did in day one as well. It was the all pink livery for Alpine for the second day test. This is what they will be running from the first two races of the season and it must have helped Ocon as he went top in the first morning session. However he didn't have a great afternoon session as he had to stop out on track. However overall he did manage 111 laps. The best day for him and the team overall. F1 then tried to test their systems at the end of the morning session by trying to do standing start but some cars had come out late such as George Russell and Max Verstappen and as such they were waiting at the end of the pit lane while the others were on the grid already lining up and as F1 wanted them to join they had aborted the start, standing start and asked them to do another formation lap. This is so obviously Max and George can join in but then unfortunately Bottas had a hydraulic leak and had to stop out on track so the session was red flag and not restarted again. It was another bad day for McLaren and they still had the same issues from day one carrying into day two. They were plagued by their brake issues and overheating and it's a race against time for them to fix those issues ahead of the third day as well as the first race of the season. The brakes are just overheating too much and they can't do any long distance running but Lando did however manage to do 59 laps on that day too but he did stop out on track early on when he came out of the pits and he red flagged the session in the afternoon. Charles managed to do 54 laps in the morning and did some race simulations with his teammate Carlos Sainz managing 59 laps in the afternoon. He did put some quick laps in when he put the fastest tyre on at the end but it was the comeback kid Kevin Magnussen who ended the day top of the time sheet after his first day out running on the Haas. He did that time at the end of the day when Haas got extra time because they missed the morning session on day one. They will also get an extra hour before day three as well as extra two hours at the end of day three as well. This is of course to make up for the total of four hours they missed. He managed to do 60 laps in the afternoon obviously including that extra hour and Schumacher managed to do 23 laps in the morning. At the end of the day McLaren then confirmed that Daniel Ricciardo has tested positive for COVID-19 and that's why he's not been with the team or in the car ahead of this whole test. He said he's getting better daily and that he should be cleared for the first race of the season in Bahrain but unfortunately he won't be in the car in day three and Lando will do all three days in this test. Joel ended last on day two and only managed to do 49 laps with Bottas only managing 25 laps in the morning. This is how day two ended. Day 3 started with loads of teams up and down the grid testing new upgrades. It looks like Red Bull had bought in significant upgrades overnight. They had bought another variation to their side pods and they clearly set to be working as Max went faster at the end of the day and he went fastest by 7 tenths of a second with Perez going quickest in the morning session as well. They changed the barge board, the front wing and obviously the side pods where the CLE is of Oracle. It looks more sculpted and you can see it's really transformed the car as well. The handling of the car looks very good and it's really hooked up. Max managed to 
do 53 laps in the afternoon, with Perez only doing 43 laps in the morning for the team. Haas had a longer session all day at, due to their freight issues on day one, so they started early and ended late as well. But unfortunately, they had a water leak early on and a fuel pump issue which kept Magnussen out of the car in the morning. Schumacher managed to do 57 laps with Magnussen only 39 laps. It was another strong and last day for Ferrari. Charles managed to do 51 laps with uh, Science doing 68 laps. No reported issues as usual and looked very reliable. Mercedes still have several issues with poor poising that they reported as they try to get to grips with their new car. Lewis did 78 laps in the morning, with George managing 71 laps in the afternoon. The car looks very reliable, but in terms of pace, they don't look to be there. McLaren had an okay day three, but the issues that plagued them in day one and day two were carrying on with their brakes. They still had issues with overheating and still couldn't do a race distance. They had flown new parts overnight, but unfortunately they still weren't fixing the issue. And apart from that, the car does look sound, but it is a major issue if they can't complete the race. Lando managed to do 90 laps overall in the day, but they do need to find a fix for those overheating breaks. This is how day 3 ended. So all the talk going into this test and on the first day was about Mercedes' side pods but it doesn't seem to be correlating on the track as the pace doesn't look there in the car. Over this test and the last test Ferrari will probably be the happiest as they had no reported issues and were showing quick times ahead of the timesheets and their car looks very reliable as well. Red Bull will also be happy as they tried new parts on day 3 and on the last 3 days of the test. They look very fast and had no reported issues as well. And honestly, if you see that car going around the track, they have no issues with poor posting as well. So that car, out of all the teams up and down the grid, looks really hooked up. As mentioned, Red Bull came out on day three with another variation of their side pods. And again, time will tell if that will put them ahead of the field. But Perez did come out to put the faster time straight away and Max obviously finished the day uh, fastest. McLaren had an up and down test with those cooling issues. This obviously meant they couldn't do long runs over the three days and then they had to fly out parts on that day three to make sure to try to fix that issue, but it doesn't look like it's been fixed. But overall, the car does seem reliable and quick, and once they fix those cooling issues, the car should be there. Also the fact that obviously Daniel wasn't in the car for the three days, but Lando was fine doing those three days. Mercedes genuinely look on the back foot here. They look to be struggling with pace and the car does not look fast and having issues with pull poising. They had these issues over the first three days in the test in Barcelona and it looks to be having the same issues in Bahrain as well. So it doesn't look like they've been fixing those issues. The drivers then came out to say that they think that they won't be competing for wings early on in the season, but they do believe the car has potential. Time will tell if they're actually sandbagging and if they're telling the truth. But from these two tests, I do believe that is actually genuine. The midfield looks very congested in terms of all the teams, in terms of the order of where they are but one thing for sure is that cars are now looking to be able to follow each other as that's what the regulations wanted to do and happen so we should see closer racing for 2022 so after the first two tests in Barcelona and Bahrain this is where I believe the pecking order is going into the first race so I believe it's Red Bull, uh, Ferrari, McLaren and Mercedes probably third or fourth you know in between them um, Aston Martin, Alpine, AlphaTauri, uh, Alfa Romeo Williams and then Haas. This is obviously based on my prediction of what I've seen over the last two tests. This can of course change when we get to the first race of the season as obviously people could be sandbagging but Red Bull genuinely look favourites alongside with Ferrari this year. Time will tell when we go racing this weekend for the first race of the season but honestly after testing we usually get an idea of where teams are and what the pecking order is but from these two tests it's really anyone's guess and it's kind of hard to predict as people could be sandbagging but these are the new regulations and people want to understand what their car can do so we would have to wait for the first race of the season to see where teams are i did a full guide for the 2022 f1 season i've linked that video below in the description so check that out to make sure that you're prepared ahead of the new season make sure you click the subscribe button below for more f1 news analysis and opinion if you've liked the video click the like button below this will really help the youtube algorithm